Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and uh, become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's episode is brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. Thanks so much for all your support. Here now is today's episode of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, The Built Baroness Matter. For your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Ben Turner, Johnny. How did your blood pressure react to hobnobbing with nobility? Well, so far, I don't feel a thing. How are you going to Nothing like the beautiful Baroness Olga Jarvis to provide impact. How much of a jewel has she given you? Around $100,000. Jewels and furs. Stolen from a New York penthouse last night. But get this. Two marriages ago, the Baroness was a Mrs. Thomas Bentley. Last week, Bentley filed a petition in bankruptcy. His commercial photography outfit's about $100,000 in the red. Well, one coincidence doesn't make a fraudulent claim. Did you read the gossip column at night? Why is that? Then you'd know what beautiful Baroness has been seen billing and cooing with what broke ex-husband. Well, it's kind of late to scoop George Fisher now, but uh, I'll try. Accounts submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Eastern Indemnity and Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Bilk Baroness matter. Expense account item one, six dollars and thirty-five cents. Gas and oil, sandwich and coffee between Hartford and New York. The penthouse of the Baroness Olga Jarvis. Lay atop a 35-story granite and glass apartment hotel on the east side. I ran the gauntlet of suspicious doorman, supercilious desk clerk, and snobbish elevator boy, only to find myself in what was destined to be a short-lived interview with the Baroness. I am so terribly sorry, Mr. Dollar, but you have come at a most inopportune time. How that careless maid of mine. It is her day off. I am rushing to attend a cocktail party, and I simply cannot find a thing. Not one thing. It is the most inopportune moment. Well, I wouldn't want to keep you from a cocktail party, Baroness, but there is some information I'd like to have. But I have told everything I know to the police. So why not run along like a dear man and get your information from them, huh? Oh, my gloves. Oh, that stupid maid. Where did she put my gloves? Well, while you're looking, maybe you can tell me uh, when you first noticed the loss. When I returned home last night, of course, at two, three in the morning, I paid no attention to time. The police will know. I called them immediately. Mm-hmm. Anybody with you when you came back home? My dear man, is all this questioning absolutely necessary? After all, I did not see my own furs and jewels. Now, why do you not go after the criminals who are responsible? Well, some cooperation from you might help me do that. Very well. I will tell you all I know. Early last evening, I had a few friends up for drink. We left for the theater at approximately 8 o'clock. Afterwards, there was a supper club. Dinner, dancing. I came home, my things were gone. Anyone come up with you? If you must know, yes. Thomas got me home. That's uh, Thomas Bentley, your former husband? Yes, yes, of course. Now, you simply must excuse me, Mr. Dollar. I'm terribly late. My friends will never forgive me. You sound more worried about your friends than you do about the robbery. Oh, but of course, the loss of dear friends is irreplaceable. Not so far as those twinkets and furs are concerned. Yeah, I know. You're insured. <laughs> Expense account item two, fifteen dollars. Five apiece to the employees I'd met on the way up. But outside of learning that August Penthouse was a gathering place for practically every screwball in New York, I came up with nothing. Things turned out a little better over at Center Street. 
where I met Lieutenant Lewison of robbery, who was in charge of the investigation. Well, uh, looks like an inside job to me, Dollar. Well, what's the dope on it, Lieutenant? Only two doors to the penthouse, front and service. Neither one was forced. Service door bolted and double locked from the inside. So someone got in the front way with a key, huh? Mm, seems reasonable. Outside of the furs and jewels, nothing else in the apartment was touched. Whoever did it knew exactly where to go. No ransacking. The job was well planned and well carried out. Uh huh. You got a list of those who have keys? Oh, you can't possibly narrow them down. The Baroness hands them out to her friends like tossing confetti at a New Year's party. We checked the obvious ones, maid, hotel employees. Haven't come up with a thing. There were two full length coats, two jackets, and a stole among the missing furs. That's right. Well, now the jewelry might not be too hard to handle. But how did anybody get out with a load of fur like that and not be noticed? I don't think it's possible. Another thing that makes it look like an inside job. Uh, the Baroness telling me she had some friends up last night? Yeah, she mentioned it. Didn't happen to mention Vasily Udescu, did she? No. Should she have? He was one of them. The doorman tells us that while the rest of the party came down around 8, Udescu didn't leave till 11.30. Might be interesting to know why, huh? Yeah, particularly in view of the fact he's got a record. Suspected confidence game on a Fifth Avenue jewelry store, suspicion of shoplifting furs, no conviction. Could be we'll close this as soon as we pick him up. Maybe. Why the doubt? You know something we don't? Yeah. I haven't had an easy case in three years. And I don't think you've had too many either. My next stop was East 56th Street and the commercial art studios of Thomas Bentley. Inside the converted brownstone, a lovely blonde in fur parka and ski pants was posing on a big heap of artificial snow under the glare of sweltering light. All right, uh, move the number three spot about a half foot to the left there, Joey. Uh, a little more. Oh, yeah, that's it, all right. Uh, now, uh, smile, darling. Make like you were enjoying it. No, 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 no. I said smile. Uh, uh, try thinking of a nice, cold, extra dry martini at Antoine. That's it. Hold it. Good. Set up for the next shot, boys. Okay, Mr. Are you Tom Bentley? Yeah. Yeah, what can I do for you? My name is Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. Oh, you want to talk about that stuff of August? That's right. Well, make it some other time, Dollar. I'm pretty busy right now. Yeah, I was wondering. About what? How you could be in full operation when you're supposed to be dead broke. <laughs> Trying to figure some tie-in between the hundred grand of insurance and my bankruptcy petition? Might not be too big a jump. The beautiful baroness always moves onward and upward, Dollar. You better break that down for me. <laughs> I was only sucking number two on a list of four husbands. How could I top number four? The Baron Jarvis. Legitimate title, Bulging with Boodle. And he kicked off after one year under the strain of keeping up with Olga. Uh, believe me, she hasn't the slightest inclination of getting involved in fraud to help out sucker number two. Then how come you're making a play for her again? My motives are purely mercenary. All I want from her is a loan of about 20 grand. That would hold off the creditors until I get back on my feet. How are you making out? Uh, so far, no grants. Well, your place is open. A deal with the creditors. I draw a measly hundred bucks a week until they get paid off, if they ever do. So, that's my story, darling. I know from nothing, believe me. Oh, I'm sorry to bother you, Tom, but Joe says they're ready on the next sit-up. Oh, okay, honey, I'll be right there. I wanted you to take a look at this leopard skin costume for the jungle shot. Oh, what about it? Well, take a look at the way the thing fits. It's ridiculous. Doesn't give me a chance to really expand my chest. I was thinking if I wore some kind of a loincloth instead, it would give you the opportunity to shoot all my muscles in place. I'll think about it, honey. Well, I brought one along with me just in case, Tom. I'll put it on for you. No sense in hiring a 44 chest if you're not going to show it off. And with loincloth, you can show the muscular play of my entire okay, body. Okay, okay, Harley. I'll go. I'll be in there in a minute. <laughs> sure, Tom. And I'll change costumes meanwhile. Oh, model. Good Lord, how do they make them that way? Body of a Hercules in the mind of a second-class ape. Well, I guess we all have our troubles, Mr. Bentley. Thanks for your time. Yeah, sure. It's okay, darling. Oh, uh, darling. Yeah? Uh, where are you staying in town? At the plaza. Why? Well, I uh, understand insurance companies offer rewards for recovery of stolen property. Something like twenty uh, percent, isn't it? Sometimes, yeah. And uh, no questions asked. Got something in mind, Miss Medley? Just wondering. It was getting late in the day, and time for the inner man to be cared for. So I headed for the plaza bar. En route, I stopped to telephone Lieutenant Lewison. You know, Dollar, this case might not be so tough as that. What have you come up with, Lieutenant? Vasily Udescu. 
picked him up 20 minutes ago. Don't tell me he confessed. No, no, not that, baby. I didn't think it could be that easy. No, it's not. We'll just have to be satisfied with the stolen jewelry we found in his apartment. It is an impossibility, a, a most indignant outrage. Me, Vasilya Udescu, being accused like a, like a criminal element. I will sue you before the court for every penny you have. You said that before, Udescu. And I will say it again and again, until you have released me. What have you got on him, Lieutenant? Exhibit A and B, Dollar. One emerald ring, one diamond bracelet. What's the million? They were covered under August policy, all right. I do not care what he covered my way. I do not know those things. I do not know how they got into my apartment. And I want to call my attorney. Well, at least I can be the last part of that. You were at the Baroness's last night, weren't you? And why should I not be? We are the most dear of friends. Well, the rest of the party left for the theater at 8 o'clock. You didn't leave until somewhere around 11.30. 11.30. And this is a criminal act? I presume? No, but it might require a little explanation. So I had seen the play they were going to do. Why should I be bored all over again? I remained there, comfortable, having some drinks until it was time to join them at the leg lawn. Uh-huh. How'd you get the furs out of the building? I, 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 I took no furs nowhere out of no building. How about the rest of the jury? I know nothing about you. And I will say no more until I have talked to my attorney. Okay, that's two. This way. In here. Sergeant Ryan will let you make the call. After you get through, Ryan, book him on suspicion of Believe robbery. me, you will regret this, Lieutenant. I will commence proceedings to sue you as well. Yeah, okay, you that's two. Uh, what do you think, darling? Well, you've got enough to book him on. Meaning it's not enough for you? No, not quite. How do you figure? Well, that bracelet appraises around 10,000, the ring around three. I've still got 87,000 to go. <laughs> Expense account item three, $1.50. Double scotch at the Plaza Bar. I could have saved the double. Halfway through, I was called to the phone. John Bentley, Dollar. Can you come over here to the studio right away? Why? I've got something for you on August robbery. Oh, what's that? I just happen to know where the loot is. I'll be right there, Bentley. And now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. I put in a call to Lewison, and after violating some minor traffic regulations and the composure of a few New York drivers, I pulled up in front of Tom Bentley's studios. A headquarters car was parked out in front, and Lewison was waiting for me just inside. Well, it didn't take you very long, Dollar. No, I caught all the lights. Mm-hmm. Where's Bentley? Back here. The funny thing about people... Well, what's that? If they'd stop trying to chisel the law, they'd save themselves a lot of trouble. See what I mean? Yeah. The size of the hole in him looks like it came from that three seventy five Magnum Winchester on the floor over there. A rifle of that caliber is more suited for hunting elephants than a job like this. Mm-hmm. Then they probably used it as a prop. Looks like they were taking some jungle shots from the studio. Adds a few complications, doesn't it? After homicide arrived, Lewison and I went back to headquarters. Baroness Olga Jarvash was there with a cute blonde by the name of Herta Werner. I recognized Herta as the model Tom Bentley had been using in the snow scene. The Baroness had as little trouble recognizing the ring and bracelet. But of course they are mine, Lieutenant. Most definitely mine. I cannot understand how Vasily could do such a thing. Such a wonderful dancer. Such marvelous parties. 
Oh, that she should do something like this is positively heartbreaking. I have a formal complaint sheet here, Baroness. I'd like you to sign it. But of course I will. Imagine Vasily doing such a thing to me. Turning out to be a common thief this way. Of course I will sign it. Maybe you're being a little hasty about this, Olga. Oh? What makes you say that, Miss Werner? I was just thinking. Lieutenant, you found the bracelet and rang in the police department? That's right. I don't suppose they were in that teakwood cabinet in the den, were they? What makes you think that? Olga, remember that party at the Silly's a week or ten days ago? The crazy one where he got the idea for that taffy pole? <laughs> How could I forget? It was the best party we had all season. A simply wonderful one. What are you driving at, Miss Werner? It's simple enough, Lieutenant. If you've ever been to a taffy pole. Yeah, rings sort of get in the way, don't they? Bracelets can, too. If you're really in the mood for it. Oh, but of course. How forgetful can I be? Of course, the ring and bracelet were in the way. So you took them off and put them in that teakwood cabinet? Yes, yes, that is exactly what I did. I had completely forgotten about them. How sweet of you to remember her, sir. You reported them missing on that itemized robbery list you gave us. Oh, naturally, I did, Lieutenant. There was a robbery, they were missing. Of course, I included them. Yeah. Oh, poor dear Vasquez. What an injustice I nearly did to him. To think I was about to sign a complaint that he was nothing but a common thief. Oh, but now everything will be all right for him, I guess. Yeah. Miss Werner's got a remarkable memory for the whereabouts of other people's jewels. The Baron has signed a statement covering the facts about the ring and the bracelet. It was witnessed with a flourish by her to Werner and more sedately by myself. Then the two of them left. Well, there it is, Dollar. If those two weren't lying, Vasily Odescu is in the clear. Well, even if they were, he couldn't have killed Tom Bentley. Yeah. I wonder if homicide came up with anything. Anything new about the employees at August Building? Their alibis are checking out one by one. Doesn't look like we've... Uh, Lewis and robbery. Anything turn up on that Bentley killing on 56th Street? Uh-huh. Yeah, well, keep us posted. No, well, not much help there. Well, seems pretty certain the 375 Winchester did the trick. Ballistics will verify in about an hour. No prints on it. So far, no witnesses. Looks like we're right back where we started from. Express account item four. One dollar and forty-five cents. Cab fare. Driving my own car, I knew I'd never have found that little back street on the far side of Greenwich Village. Oh, there, Mr. Dollar. Come in. I've been expecting you. Yeah, I gathered that. You look like the type who'd be sharp enough to get what I meant. Back at police headquarters. Well, the way you underlined your address on that statement and then batted your eyes at me wasn't exactly subtle. It wasn't meant to be. Well, now that that's settled... What do you want to tell me about the robbery? And, uh, how much do you want? <laughs> Not very subtle yourself, are you? You weren't thinking about my personality when you issued that invitation. No, I was thinking about a thousand dollars. You've got expensive ideas. A hundred thousand dollar loss is even more expensive. Mm-hmm. Do you know where the stuff is? If I could tell you that, I'd ask for 20 percent. Well, what can you tell me? Come here a little bit, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, sure. I can't show you any etching. But there's some pretty fine photos hanging on the walls. What do you think of them? Yeah, very nice. But I like my cheesecake on the feminine side. Hey, didn't I see that massive muscle down at Bentley's earlier today? You did. His name's Harley Townsend. Your boyfriend? My husband. Oh, congratulations. Don't bother. He won't be for long. All that big hand has on his mind are his muscles and other people's money. What's he got to do with a thousand you had on your mind? Plenty. He has a key to August penthouse. He was with a dinner party last night, only he left like around about 12.30 and came back at 1.30 with Tom Bentley. Starting to add up to a thousand, Mr. Dollar? Not yet. Then try this. Tom Bentley called him around seven tonight. Harley blew up. Said he wouldn't settle for 10,000 when he could get 50. And Bentley better wait for him and get over there. And he tore out of here fast. And he took some of these cartridges with him. 
Pretty big caliber. So are the rifles of Harley's they were using at the studio. Where's Harley now? I haven't the slightest idea. You're not telling everything you know. Maybe not, but you can't prove it. And I'm not interested in being booked as an accessory. Hmm? Sounds reasonable. Expense account item five. One dollar and seventy-five cents. Cab fare back to Center Street. So, her Warner came up with something, huh, darling? Well, if a thousand dollars is the going price on selling out husbands, she is. My tie in is that. It's Holly and Tom Bentley worked it together. Bentley wants to take a safe twenty grand for turning his stuff back, and Harley objects with a three seventy five Winchester. I can't think of a neater answer. Well, we'll check it out when we pick Harley up. Not much we can do until then. We could try to figure how those furs got out of the building without being seen. I got a couple of possible answers. They could have been worn out on some woman's back or smuggled out by an employee. Mm hmm. Say, a lot of those buildings have their service pickups at night, don't they? Yeah. Saves traffic jams. Why? Well, somebody posing as a cleaner, storage man. Could have carried them out without anyone paying too much attention. I thought of that too, Dollar. Trouble is, the side seat the service entrance opens on was torn up for repairs. No service calls or deliveries were made yesterday or last night. When is that repair job supposed to be over? Sometime late this afternoon or tonight. Why? Well, then maybe our boy could still use the serviceman gag. Not unless the stuff is still in the building. You know, uh, that's a thought, Lieutenant. The side street by the Baroness's apartment building might have been under repair yesterday, but there was nothing wrong with it by the time we got there. We went into the service entrance and checked with the night superintendent who was on the door. Yeah, that's right, Lieutenant. Street was fixed about five in the afternoon. We've been getting regular service calls since then. Do you keep a checklist of those calls? Yeah, sure thing. Right over here. Check them in and out. <laughs> I don't see much sense to it, but we do. Now, well, here it is. Anything unusual about any of the tradesmen? I don't know what you call unusual, Lieutenant. A poster came in. Three, four florist boys. Oh, get a lot of them. The cleaners. Liquor delivered to a couple apartments. Usual run. Anybody take any packages out? Well, I wouldn't know about that particularly. I don't pay much attention. Coming in and out all the time. Guess maybe the laundry man is going to take something out, though. He usually does. What laundry man is that? New fella. I don't think I ever saw him before. Real big he is. Kind of busting out a uniform. Nice enough fellow, though. Could be Harley. Yeah, sounds like him. Uh, what laundry was he from? I don't think I noticed. Just saw he was a new one. Yeah, if you want to know, why don't you ask him? You know where we can find him? Sure. He only checked in maybe ten minutes ago. Probably down in the basement laundry room right now. The laundry room, lined with wooden storage compartments and cluttered up with washing machines, dryers, and tubs, looked like a mad welter of confusion under the dim night light. See him, darling? No, not yet. You've got to be down here somewhere. There's no other way out. One of the storage compartments. Yeah, down at the end. Hey, there he is. It's Harley. Pushing that laundry cart. Yeah. Okay, Harley, stop right there. Police officers. Watch it, Lieutenant. Don't drive, Harley. Stop that gun. under this laundry. Jewelry, too. Must have kept him in an empty storage room overnight. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, one of us had better sharpen up on the target range. Hmm? There's a bullet hole to the sleeve of this meat. That'll cost your outfit something, Dollar. Well, under the circumstances, I don't think they'll mind. Expense account item six, nineteen dollars and thirty cents. Hotel bill and miscellaneous. Expense account item seven, five dollars and ten cents. Gas and oil back to Hartford. 
Expense account total, $50.45. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Welcome back. Well, a lot of dialects in this uh, particular episode, and I thought a pretty good mystery. Uh, uh, I liked the twist and that perfectly reasonable explanation for uh, why that guy had those uh, jewels. All right, well, now we turn to listener comments and uh, feedback. And uh, Bobby uh, Walker writes in uh, on Facebook, just got done listening to the Frustrated Phoenix Matter. Great show as always. Plane tickets sure uh, were cheaper back then. Uh, thanks so much for the comment. Uh, Bobby, uh, the plane tickets uh, weren't uh, cheaper, just uh, things cost less in general. Uh, and uh, There have been a lot of research on old-time radio, in the particular the show, and some folks have gone over the expense account, and what they found is based on the numbers in the uh, episodes, uh, it's the cost for uh, airline travel has actually gone up slower than the overall rate of inflation, perhaps partially due to some of the deregulation uh, and stuff that occurred in the uh, airline industry. Uh, but they were actually somewhat meticulous uh, when the show was at its best. They would actually check these numbers make sure that was really what a flight would cost. And this does sound about right for that time period. Bobby posted a separate comment saying, My wife and I fall asleep every night listening to Johnny Dollar. Thank you for providing us with great entertainment. Well, thanks so much, Bobby. I'm glad uh, everyone's uh, enjoying the show, and uh, that'll actually do it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with the lineup. In the meanwhile, send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and call us 208-991-4783. Uh, from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.